All right, guys. I just had the craziest freaking crash of my life happen to me, and all these guys witnessed it. I saw it in first person. Yeah, so he was in the goggles. I have him on now. Um, <laughs> the footage will come after this video, but what happened is I was just flying around. You know, the battery was down low, kind of around 14 point, I don't know, three, two volts under load, and uh, I was coming around for a landing and I popped it into stabilize mode. And it was flying around just fine, doing everything just right. And then all of a sudden, I just lost it. I didn't have any more controls at all. It was just going. Like it went full throttle to idle in like two seconds and just kept on doing that. It did a loop at one point. This looks like a sparrow. And then the gear just absolutely smacked the ground. That's where my gimbal was. This is where it is now. Um, that'll be in the video too. You'll probably get to see it shoot off of the aircraft and then you'll hear the aircraft continue so cool. to fly. Um, this wasn't screwed on at all, so it just literally fell right off. No damage. My gear, um, screws are a little loose. I probably busted that plastic a little bit. My telemetry radio fell out. Um, FUV system looks good. Pedo tube still on. And inside of here, I mean, this was a freaking hard crash. You guys will be able to look at the video and see it, but, uh, oh. So, I dented my nice big battery on the very bottom of it. Shouldn't be an issue though. That should still be fine. It'll fly. Um, There's no FPV air. video. This is, or my battery, that's fine. There's this is my video no battery. <laughs> so, we had some wires. My PDB board just <laughs> fell straight off. My camera. Um, that literally, I had a seal of hot glue around that, like a massive seal of hot glue, and it just shot through that. The wires are still on it though. That's good. I cracked the shit out of the balsa. I'm going to have to epoxy the crap out of that. Um, it's, oh god, that's going to suck. My Pixhawk fell out. Um, looks like my tabs to put my Pixhawk on are still in though, so I should be able to just get a new foam board and throw that on there. I'm going to have to kind of rewire it. And, uh, I don't know. I mean, it survived. Like, it kept flying after the crash, and then I even landed it afterwards. Like I regained control after like a minute of just out of control flying and it worked and it landed. Then it nosed over of course because I landed in the nice snow. So yeah, that was fun. Um, you probably won't be able to see it but way over there by that fence, that road, that's where the gear hit, like smashed down and then I landed just short of that like two minutes later. Oh, so yeah. that was awesome. That was nuts. Now it's time to fly the disco. Send it. <laughs> Fuck. That was nuts. Craziest crash ever. Coolest crash ever. This should be yeah, just dripping. And the water. Ranger's still alive, so you know what? Good airframe. Alright. So the flight started off just like any other, you know, normal Ranger flight. Um, doing my pre-flight checks. I did uh, quite a few pre-flight checks before um, what you see here on the video. I'm now on my uh, just freshly shoveled runway. Um, running up the engine real quick, making sure things are going to work. And then uh, checking my control surfaces, making sure they're still moving. This is the first flight um, I've had with the new gimbal on it, my Fiu Tech gimbal. So uh, the CG was a little further forward than I was used to, but nothing, nothing terrible, nothing out of the ordinary. I could still control it just fine. Um, definitely could still control it just fine. See on this takeoff, gets off just fine, full flaps, full throttle, jumps into the air. You know, I mean, just by all means, a fairly normal flight, and it continued to be a normal flight for quite a while. Um, I was up in the air for, I think, a solid six minutes before things went south, and they went south real quick. You guys will be able to see that. But. So, two important things to note. Um, one, I was flying line of sight, not FPV. I just wanted to fly line of sight for safety reasons. I um, was switching between manual and stabilize mode. And then also, I was not using any of the auto flying modes at all. I was purely using manual and stabilized mode. Um, this is part one of the video. We'll just be taking a look at the crash footage, reviewing it, um, just seeing what actually happened. And then part two will be more of an in-depth review analysis. Uh, we'll take a look at the Pixhawk flight logs. Um, it'll be on Google Earth, get a good 3D representation of the crash, and uh, actually take a more in-depth look at my settings too. So we'll skip to the crash footage now. So right here we're just going back to the GoPro footage. Um, this pass was just supposed to be a low pass with flaps, and then flaps up, go around, circle back around for an actual landing. Instead, right up here, we pitch up, plane whip stalls, throttle idle, 
throttle full into the ground and dead. And then the plane continues to fly. So here's that OSD footage that I promised. Um, important things to note, airspeed up in the top left corner. Um, under that you have your throttle setting. Uh, very bottom left, or not very bottom left, above left and long, you have your voltage uh, currently looking like 14.6-ish volts. It's not under too high of a load now. In the very center, you have your artificial horizon and uh, your mode switch, or mode display, uh, I guess is a better term, in manual mode right now. Um, arrows, you don't really need to worry about those, but those are the those are the main three. So. Right now, going back in for that low pass again, we're in manual mode. 0% throttle right here. Now I jack it back up to 40%. And, oh, stability. Loiter. Oh, wait, no, that was supposed to be my flaps. Into the ground. Dead. Let's take a look at that again. So now we're in slow-mo. Notice the mode. I'm in manual. I thought I was going to switch my flaps up here. I actually switched my mode switch into loiter. That was a big no-no. The plane then violently pitches up, whip stalls, increases throttle to 80%, and proceeds to throw itself into the ground at, you know, 50 miles an hour. And then it continues to fly in loiter mode. It just gets right back up in the air. You see here my OSD reboots. As soon as it reboots, I get OSD back, my video feed's gone. Take a look at the artificial horizon. It is bouncing all over the place. Right now, it just did a loop. The plane just literally did a loop. I had three people see it do a loop. Look at the throttle, jumping from 0 to 80%, back down to 0, back up to 80%. Oh, it's nuts. Okay, so now I'm back in manual mode. I have control. I don't know I have control. I, I think it's still just, like, flying around, you know, going willy-nilly. It's not until, like, 20 seconds into manual mode that I actually realize I have control. Not to mention... The initial impact sent my battery so far forward in the inner fuselage that my CG was thrown just ridiculously far forward. I was having to muscle the crap out of it, give it a ton of power just to get enough control to actually keep it in the air. So at this point, I go throttle idle, I bring the speed down, I get it lined up for final, and I land it. And on landing, I, I landed it in thick snow. The, the, um, the wheels caught. It flipped over. Video stops right there. Yeah. So that's that. So when the plane hit the ground, the GoPro shot off of the plane, but it kept recording. So here, what I've done is I've uh, synced up the audio from the GoPro sitting on the ground to the OSD footage. So check this out. So as soon as this footage is over, uh, that'll conclude part one of this video. Stay tuned for part two where we take a more in-depth look at the crash.